trees purify the air on our Earth. They convert harmful greenhouse gases into oxygen. Healthy ecosystems are highly needed to curb the climate crisis. But they are under pressure from heavy industries, and the paper industry is no exception. We need to take action and be a part of the solution. Traditional paper is a mix of trees, water, chemicals, and energy. Still, many acres of forest are used for paper production annually. There are alternatives to traditional paper, and they need you to grow. My name is Karine van der Laan, and I work as a freelance advisor on the conservation of forests. Natural forests have an intrinsic value, but next to that they have very important functions. For example, they provide natural habitats for animal and plant species, but they also store large amounts of carbon, and they support the regulation of water cycling and uh, climate regulation at the local level, but also at the global level. As soon as you convert natural forests into monoculture plantations, for example, for the production of pulp and paper, then you lose or alter these functions. In principle, monoculture plantations contain a limited amount of plant and tree species. This negatively impacts the water cycling within the plantation and its surroundings, and this can lead to droughts and a higher risk of forest fires. The growing world population, but also the transition from plastics to paper in the packaging industry can lead to even more conversion of natural forests. And this is the reason we need to seek for alternatives to paper, but also we need to focus on diversifying monoculture plantations. I'm Anna Plone. I'm the founder of Paper on the Rocks. And five years ago, I got to know that there are beautiful paper alternatives on the market and that we need a forest-friendly paper industry for the future. My vision would be a paper industry that's based on multiple input materials, mainly waste materials, as opposed to an industry based mainly on wood fibers for the source of the paper like stone paper and paper from agricultural waste to make sure that there's not so much pressure on the resources that we use for regular pulp paper production. That will mean that we have a future with clean air, clean water and we can bring back biodiversity. My name is Paul Spies. I'm working for Schutpapier. My uh, official function is key account manager. 400 years ago, uh, Schutpapier produced paper and board from purely natural products. And during the time, these natural products were replaced by chemical stuff. And that is nowadays what we don't want. We want to get back to the 400 years ago situation. So we try to use more natural fibers, natural glues, to get back to the situation of 400 years ago. Of course, we use cellulose from trees, but we add a lot of different fibers, like fibers of tomato plants, uh, paprika plants, uh, bamboo, uh, fibers of recycled genes, and that makes us uh, very unique. Our philosophy is that waste doesn't exist. And making paper is mostly, you have to use fibers. So fibers is coming out of waste materials, out of the agro industry. So rest materials like tomato stems, leaves of tomatoes or grass even, uh, tulip bulbs. And we can use that to make papers. The fibers we use are also seven times recyclable. We are trying to become more and more sustainable every, every year. We uh, pump up our own water from 60 meter deep wells. We buy our um, raw materials FSC or PEFC uh, certified. Uh, in the last two years we placed over 1400 solar panels on the roofs of the paper mill. And that reduces our energy consumption by 25%. So, there are examples of sustainable, innovative paper mills, which are optimizing existing production methods. But reaching the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement 
These 21st century paper solutions using less and entirely different resources and healthy supply chains to scale. Ik ben Hans Bootsma en ik heb 30 jaar in de papierbranche als papierconsultant gewerkt en als papierexpert en daar ligt mijn passie. Papier kun je recyclen en dat, dat is afhankelijk van de vezel. Een korte vezel kun je ongeveer vier keer recyclen en een lange vezel een keer of zes tot zeven. Je kunt niet ongelimiteerd blijven recyclen. Je hebt ten alle tijde een nieuwe pulp daarbij nodig. Dat betekent dat je ongeveer 60-70% gerecycled materiaal kunt hebben, maar er moet ten alle tijde moet er iets van een procent of 30 nieuwe pulp bij komen. En het is belangrijk om de sterkte van het papier goed te houden. Want naarmate het meer gerecycled wordt, verliest het zijn sterkte gewoon. Ons papiergebruik wereldwijd is ongeveer 70% voor de verpakkingsindustrie. Uh, ongeveer 25% voor het grafische industrie. Dus boeken, kranten, tijdschriften en alles wat bedrukt gaat worden. En 5% is voor de hygiënische papieren, toiletpapier en keukenrollen en tissues. In de huidige papierindustrie is er al heel veel innovatie geweest. Uh, als ik het vergelijk met de periode dat ik in de 80 jaren begon, is het beduidend veel beter. Er wordt heel veel hergebruikt, onder andere de warmte, de elektriciteit, het water. De oplossing om de doelstelling van het Parijse Klimaatakkoord te gaan halen, denk je dat je verder moet gaan kijken hoe kunnen we het papierproces verder verbeteren. In hoeverre kunnen we meer gaan recyclen en meer gaan recyclen met de warmte, maar ook meer kunnen recyclen met water. Om dan de CO2-uitstoot te verminderen. En ik denk dat je moet gaan zoeken naar alternatieve grondsoorten. Denk aan landbouwafval, denk aan steenafval. Ook daar wordt al wat een en ander mee gedaan. Paper alternatives can already be produced in existing facilities, like normal paper mills for the agricultural waste paper but also for the stone paper, the facilities are already existing. Five years ago, I hardly knew anything about the paper industry. And now I'm convinced that we can create a healthy industry for the future. We have a roadmap on how to get there. I invite you to join. It is time for the next chapter in paper production and consumption. <laughs>